So greetings everyone. Greetings everyone from the team Own Your Growth. And today we have with us Dr. Akshya Sairam, who is presenting to us and a little bit about uh, uh, Dr. Akshya. She's a uh, BNYS doctor from SDM College of Naturopathy and Yogic Sciences. And with a keen interest in integrative medicine, she aspires to spread the message of importance of the integrative healing and lifestyle change in order to combat most of the metabolic disorders that plague the earth today. And for people who had already checked out our uh, previous video with Dr. Akshaya, you would surely watch for this. And she's also the co-founder of Holiness, which is a lifestyle and health establishment which focuses on a state of wholesome and balanced living. And uh, it also conducts uh, various health workshops targeting diabetes, hypertensive disorders and hypercholesterolemia and other metabolic disorders as such. And again, our Own Your Growth platform is happy to have Dr. Akshaya for the second time with us and over to you. <laughs> Thank, thank you so much, Dr. Azuma, for the wonderful introduction. And um, so I think let's dive right into it. Let's dive into the topic for today since they've gotten an idea of who I am and what we're doing here. Um, so today's concept is, so I, I like, um, I touched a little on this the last time when I was talking about my journey with, uh, you know, with, with my skin. And I, I spoke about the Panchakosha concept uh, very lightly the last time. So today let's dive into the details of it a little bit. Um, so let's talk about the origins of the Panchakosha concept. So where does it come from? How do we know about it? Um, so it starts, it, it, it comes actually from the Vedanta philosophy. So it's one of the four major philosophies in our Vedic literature. And most specifically, it's in the Taitreya Upanishad. So it's over 5,000 years old. And uh, if you look into Taitreya Upanishad, what it stands for, what the essence of Taitreya Upanishad is, it completely focuses on self-knowledge. Like it gives you the tools to like go within yourself and it and it gives it, it places an emphasis on why we should know ourselves. What is the importance of self-knowledge? So there's um there's um in our uh, section six, verse two, uh there's um there's a Sanskrit shloka and its English translation is when the soul attains self-knowledge, it becomes the lord of the mind, the lord of speech, the lord of your eyes, lord of yours, lord of knowledge, then it becomes Brahman himself. So it's so important for us. So why I'm, uh, why I'm touching on this is because even disease or any sort of ailment, it's very crucial to go through that period, to, through that you know process of self-knowledge. Because without knowing what's going on, without knowing what can I do right to fix the wrong, it's really pointless for you to like have that condition because it's kind of like we can consider to be a teacher in a way. So that's what the Panchakosha concept is all about. It forces you to become your own teacher. And so you're learning from yourself and you're going through the different layers of yourself in order to discover what went wrong, how do I right the wrong. That's essentially what the Taitreya Upanishad stands for. That's the essence of it. And that's our Vedanta philosophy. Okay, so coming to the five layers. So, um, you know, it's, it's beautiful because the five layers have been poetically compared to caves or guhas in Sanskrit. So it talks about how our bodies, like, there's a cave inside a cave inside a cave. So it kind of um, deals with the matter of exploration. How, like, when you explore a cave, in the same way we have to explore ourselves and uh, our five layers and we've got to get to the crux and the root cause of it all through exploration. So, um, and if you're living in 2021 and if you think that the body is just made up of flesh and bones and cells, cells then I really don't know what to say. I've got nothing. So there's so much more to our existence than just flesh and bones. Right? I think that's pretty much been established now in our 21st century. And uh, that's what the yogic, integrated yoga therapy is. The whole approach um, to a patient when through Ayush systems of medicine, especially through naturopathy and yoga, is through that five-year explanation, a very integrated, very wholesome approach to dealing with the condition. So it's a holistic perspective. It's not just limited to the physical body. Here is where I'd like to kind of compare and contrast between how modern medicine or the allopathic system of medicine, quote unquote, deals with conditions versus how Ayush systems of medicine, specifically naturopathy and yoga, deal with conditions. So suppose you go to a doctor, okay, like an allopathic doctor, you go with a condition of either, let's say, let's take a very common one, either hypertension or diabetes. You walk into the, uh, the doctor's office and uh, they do a couple tests on you and like, okay, so here's your medicine, take it, deal with it. And then you've got to, you've got to like, deal with it for the rest of your life with the help of medicines. So they kind of um, they, they, they kind of work in the very physical layer of it all. 
and if you notice like our mastery like the scientific mastery of the physical body the knowledge that we have about the physical body is so detailed it's so immense that now allopathy is like fragmented your body into sections so we have a nephrologist we have a cardiologist we've got uh, we've got like a um a specialist for almost every condition so we dissect the body into different organs and we deal with that way oh you got a kidney problem oh i'm a general physician please go see a nephrologist like you know that's the kind of thing that, that we've come to these days segmenting the body and treating it according to that and why why we feel like the ayush practitioners and the holistic system medicine feels that wrong feels uh, that's wrong is because we know that it's not just the physical body we know that we can't segment a body into a heart and a lung and say okay i'm going to deal with this just the heart and the lung and i'm going to like symptomatically deal with the problem that's like putting a bandaid over an issue right and saying okay so this is it you're done uh, i'm just putting a bandaid here if something else comes up we'll work with the cardiologist if we get a heart problem later that's essentially what's happening in today's world what we do in the holistic system of medicine is we look at the body as more than just the physical level we look at it as, we look at it as an energy field which has multiple layers and each one of these layer, layers interact with one another in a very unique and distinct way that's how we see the physical body no that's how we see uh, how we deal with diseases so it's not just the physical body we look at everything and we deal we deal with it in, from the very root i'm going to take you through that from the anumaya gosha then we deal with the pranamaya the manumaya the vijnanamaya we like to educate the patient tell them what's going on within their systems how can they equip themselves better to handle their conditions that's essentially what we are trying to do from a holistic way and here we don't believe in segmenting the body we feel that if your kidney has an issue it may not be a primary kidney issue that must have come from somewhere else right so if we deal with the body as a whole then automatically the kidney issue will dissolve on its own will like rectify itself when we correct the root cause of it so going to the root cause of it through analysis through uh, introspection through a lot of you know getting together putting our minds together that's what we like to do that's how we like to look at diseases we look at it as a community thing like doctors coming together minds coming together to solve an issue that's how we look at conditions okay let's start with the very very first layer which is our most primal layer or the anumaya kosha it's also called the food sheet so there's a saying that your body is just food rearranged like your physical body what do food you take it that food is just been rearranged and that's how you look that's your physical body essentially so um and um uh, so this physical body is what science has been dealing with for the past 200 years every single research every single experiment everything you name it has been completely along the lines of the anumaya kosha so we have mastered this kosha all the way we literally can't go any gap we can go more into it but i think like we've pretty much reached like the the base of the pot when it comes to anumaya kosha in terms of discovery and uh, that's how allopathic medicines deal with it you know like every single medication you take it essentially works only on the anumaya kosha level whether it's your metformin whether it's your beta blockers you name it it's all along the anumaya kosha right your physical body so um even yoga even when you when you go to a naturopath or you go to an ayush uh, practitioner the first thing we look at is the anumaya kosha level but how we deal with it is the two are three main holy grails first one is proper nutrition so rectifying your nutrition making sure that figuring out what your dietary habits are correcting it so it suits your constitution so it suits your vata pitta kapha constitution so it suits your amalgamation of your pancha mahabhuta so you know how fire water air space and um, metal are kind of integrated into this thing that we call the body everyone has a different composition of it everyone has like, some people have 25% water i'm just giving like an example here so hypothetically speaking so so we want to make sure the nutrition that we give you is appropriate for your body's needs and is suitable to for your body type the second thing is obviously our yoga asanas i'm going to take you through that so first thing is proper nutrition right eating the right thing second thing is our yoga asanas so our you know whether it's our pada hastasana whether it's our surya namaskars everything works on dealing with you know it it connects the body with the mind but essentially it works on the body level so it's you know to stretch out all the muscles you know when we release when we stretch muscles we release those happy hormones of endorphins into the blood stream and when we become more flexible you know it our body it it it's just less prone to wear and tear when there's more circulation flowing through the system so you want to work on that you know compressing each uh, muscle group or working on the internal abdominal area the internal organs giving that very very micro massage at the cellular level that's how our asanas work 
And the third thing is our shat karmas. So we know the cleansing process that we have, whether it's our niti. So for those of you who aren't in the naturopathic yogic or ayush field, you won't know what this is. We basically, in our uh, yoga concept, we have six ways of cleansing the body. So the first one is neti, so that works with the upper respiratory passage. The next, second one is dhauti, that works with your, so vamana dhauti, vasta dhauti, so it works with your gastric area. So in cleansing out the acid, the acid, excessive acid and bile, that's you no know, stagnating and festering in the stomach, you just want to cleanse that out, that's the dhauti. Then basti works on the lower um, digestive area, so you know, colon, the rectum, basti works on that. Nauli works again on the digestive area, Kapalabhati is a complete lung cleanse. It, its aim is to completely cleanse out the toxins and purify the body by forcefully exhaling repeatedly. You need a practitioner to take you through this. Sixth one is Trataka. This works on the internal level. It's it's a very um, it works the pituitary gland. It works on cleansing the eyes. So these six processes work on cleansing the body in a physical level in the purest way possible. So we've got our shat karmas. We've got our yoga. And we've got our diet. So this is how naturopaths and yogic doctors deal with your diseases at the Anamaya Kosha or the physical layer. Second, coming to your energy sheet or your Pranamaya Kosha. Okay, for um, so let's do a quick experiment, okay? So I'm going to be timing, okay, you, you can do this yourself, I guess, because it's not the right platform for that. But time yourselves for a minute and try to consciously just become, just don't, don't try to control your breath here. Just observe how many respiratory rates you have in a minute. So one inhale, one exhale equals one round. So just time yourself for a minute and see how many breaths you get uh, in a minute. If it's less than 10, then you're great. You're functioning at the most optimum breath level. Your body is good. This is how the Vedas have, uh, this is the ideal breath rate according to the Vedas. But if your breath rates of mostly, I've done this experiment with multiple people, with almost all of my uh, clients, and all of them almost seem to have an average breath rate of over 23. That's what, that's, that's the average breath rate people have these days. Because first, A, we don't utilize the full efficiency of our lungs. We only utilize the upper lobes of our lungs. You notice our breath is very shallow usually. And also um, in our, uh, in our Upanishads, uh, sorry, in our uh, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, we have a sutra that says, um, Chale vate chalam chittam nishchale nishchalam bhavet, which signifies that your breath is the link that connects your body and your mind. So the more rapidly your mind works, the more rapid your breath will tend to be. So we all know that our mind works at an exponential rate these days. We all have way too many thoughts. So that, that our breath now rate being over 23 is a direct testament to that to how active our minds are, overactive rather, to, to a point that it can be considered a bit unhealthy also. So um, that's it, right? So when we notice any sort of abnormality, whether it's not abnormality, but you know, a diseased condition, whether it's hypertension, diabetes, uh, arteriosclerosis, anything, you name it, it doesn't happen overnight. It's not like you wake up one day and you suddenly have arteriosclerosis. It's a very um, insidious thing. It happens over a long period of time. So the thing, so it first starts off, I'm going to take you through where it starts. But your breath first gets disrupted. So interruption in the breath, that's the first thing that happens. And if that happens for a prolonged period of time, you keep breathing inappropriately, you keep breathing the superficial way, we, you keep breathing for 23 uh, respiratory cycles in a minute. This happens for a long period of time over many years, then it manifests in the physical layer. So it always the pranamaya kosha has to deal with that breath, you know, because it's our pranic body, the prana, our vital force, that's essentially what governs the pranamaya kosha. So, um, you know, so I can get into the Nadis aspect. We've got, we have about 72,000 Nadis, the three ones being Sushumna, Ida, Pingala. This is all like for the doctors to know and for everyone else to find out gradually as they go. I don't want to overwhelm everyone with information. But yes, so your Nadis, your breath, your mind, all of these are so closely associated and they play a very, very vital role in the manifestation of diseased conditions in the physical body. So it's crucial that we deal with this breath layer and we shouldn't ignore it. And this is not something that science hasn't even touched upon yet. I think, they, I think they're just trying to enter this phase because people are still dealing with Anamaya Kosha level. Now we're gradually entering Pranamaya, getting to Manumaya, Manumaya Vignanamaya is like a huge other. We have no idea when that's going to happen. But the treatment for the Pranamaya Kosha level from the perspective of a naturopathic and yogic doctor is through Pranayamas. So we always make sure when every yoga session, 45 minutes of it will be asanas, 15 minutes of it will be for pranayama. So we'll take you through various, whether it's anulom bilom, which is no balancing both the nostrils. And uh, a very quick uh, um, intro into this is, so both the nostrils are connected 
anatomically, if you look at it into the science of it too. So left nostrils connect to the right hemisphere of the brain and the right nostrils connect to the left hemisphere of the brain. So each time we breathe in through one particular nostril, we're activating the opposite cerebral hemisphere. So we do Nadi Shodhana Pranayama, we're breathing in through one nostril, breathing out the other, then breathing in through the other, breathing out this one. So balancing both the cerebral hemispheres. So we can understand how the connection happens at a very physical level. And uh, so we have the Nadi Shodhana breath, then we've got the Surya Anulom, which is only right nostril breathing, Chandra Anulom, which is only left nostril breathing. These are just a few, we've got like a multitude of pranayama practices so based on what your condition is based on what your body and your breath um your breath quality needs right now the doctor will prescribe that pranayama for you so this is how we deal with it uh, with your with your disease at a pranayama kosha level pranayama kosha level so all about calming down getting the breath intact okay coming to our third out of our fifth layer which is our mental sheath or our manomaya kosha so we know that the daily mind is your mental sheath so the entire gamut of feelings and emotions that we have during every single waking moment is what the manomaya kosha is essentially composed of so every single emotion you have you know like dislike phobia love compassion uh, obsession irritation every single one of these emotions it stems from the mind and it's all at the manomaya kosha level this manomaya kosha is actually the biggest culprit of all diseases. All of our non-communicable diseases, all of our lifestyle-related diseases, more than nanomaya kosha, more than the pranomaya kosha, everything precipitates from the manomaya kosha level, over 90% of the conditions. So here, that's why it's so important for us to deal with it from a very... So I think I mentioned my acne journey. It was totally a manomaya kosha imbalance. It was like completely from that level. So I had to deal with it from there. Then I noticed that my breath was off. So my manomaya kosha imbalance was like kind of precipitating into my pranamaya kosha with imbalance in breath. When I didn't rectify that, then that completely became a full-blown attack on the physical body or anamaya kosha level. So the root cause of it, which all doctors, um, holistic practitioners try to deal with, is at the manomaya kosha level. So here we our treatments we usually give is, you know, working with the patient. So therapy, talking to them, you know, and particular practices like mind sound resonance techniques. Is that the practitioner will take you through and the most important thing is cyclic meditation i think we for almost all of our patients we prescribe cyclic meditation at least once a week we make sure they go through it it's a wonderful practice i highly recommend it for people who have a lot of um, you know like all, all of these uh, 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 kind of chaotic emotions all over the place i highly highly recommend cyclic because it is a game changer um so now talking about it from a spiritual perspective up till here we are the same as our dogs you know, even our dogs have anamaya, pranamaya, and manumaya kosha. So, like, you know, there's this saying, right? Like, your mind is like a drunk monkey that's stung by a scorpion and that's jumping around. So, it's extremely restless and crazy. So, it's our goal. So, the only way to control such a highly chaotic um, system like your mind is through regular self-introspection and through self-knowledge. Again, bringing us back to the crux of Taitre Upanishad, which is self-knowledge. So now coming into, so I have a gif for this, like various emotions, this represents, this is a very good representation of our Manomaya Kosha. Then coming into our Vijnanamaya Kosha or our fourth layer. This is what differentiates us from our dogs. Our dogs do not have this layer. It's essentially us, uh, the human beings who have this. So this is our higher knowing or the voice of reason that exists within us. It's that inner voice that always tells us right from wrong. And um, you can think of this as the witness mind. So this always watches over the monkey mind. So this, this always checks the monkey mind is wrong. But unfortunately or fortunately, most of us don't, aren't very in touch with our Vijnanamaya Kosha level. We're very, most of us just live in the primal world and we're like, okay, this makes sense logically, so let me go with it. So the voice of reason is kind of just getting, um, you know, it's just getting uh, um, more uh, quiet, I guess, as the time goes by. But again, the only way to awaken it and the only way to make this voice louder is through self-knowledge. So the treatment that uh, doctors have for Vijnanamaya Kosha is education. And, you know, like imparting uh, education to our patients. So when they come into our clinic or when they come into our room and they tell us about our, their conditions, we never tell them, okay, so this is what you're going to eat and you're going to be fine. Okay, this is what, this is yoga style, you're going to be fine. It's our duty to educate them on why they're doing this. You know, what, so we let them know, you know what, uh, maybe this is what is precipitating your emotion, your uh, condition, you know, this excessive emotion that you have, this could be a problem. Do you, do you know why that could be? So we make them question it. We make them become the analyzer. 
so it's so this is very very crucial because it's not just enough for someone to say here's your prescription go ahead go do your yoga go eat the diet that i'm giving you you'll be fine it's so important for us to educate that patient so they can take charge of their health and they can become their own doctor and they can help 10 other people someday so vigyanam and kosha is a very very important part of our treatment uh, patterns uh, because it helps us in controlling that very very uh, chaotic monkey mind so this is our uh, ugui from kung fu panda so i really like to so put him in here okay coming to the last layer that is oh i didn't add the name of it it's the anandamaya kosha layer or the bliss sheath so this is the part of you that can completely experience bliss and silence okay so there's no uh, there's no other goal for a human being rather than to attain the state we we deserve to attain the state because everyone deserves to feel that pure bliss that pure silence that pure unadulterated love right and uh, no matter what we can't feel unless we reach the stage so this we we shouldn't have any other goal in life but to figure out how to get here so this is the layer where you feel those emotions that love that happiness that peace with no strings attached you know you're not relying on the materialistic world to give you these uh emo- with these um uh, sensations you're not relying on anybody else or anything to give you the it's just there no strings attached it's just omnipresent you know so that's the layer that we're all trying to get to and we all hopefully will get to someday and uh, yeah that's essentially it so our inner peace layer so the only way to get here is through a more deep level of meditation you know just being able to sit with yourself even if it's just for 30 seconds in shri just to sit with yourself for 30 seconds in silence to know that you're not the body in the mind to detach yourself from the mind a little bit so it's not taking you all over the place the only reason we let our mind take us to all these places because we we connect with the mind so deeply we feel that we are the mind so it's so hard for us to dis- to disassociate so the moment it's going to take some time not saying that it's going to happen instantly you know over over overnight that you're going to get your meditation techniques down but you need to start somewhere right so even if it's 30 seconds initially you just sit with yourself for 30 seconds slowly take it up to 45 seconds one minute One minute, fifteen seconds. By every day extending your period with yourself for fifteen by fifteen seconds, it can give you a world of a difference in order to push you towards this Ananda Maya Kosha layer. So um, I think that's essentially the end of my presentation. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, Az- uh, Doctor Azma, please you can shoot. So uh, I would like you to share with some instances where you uh, really found that there's the problem in. manon maya kosha and not in the anna maya kosha like uh, earlier you had shared with us your experience mm-hmm. and uh, seeing a lot of patients you would have identified so if you could uh, relate on how what would be the uh, the case in like for example diabetes or in hypertension it would be great okay cool so um the first case that's coming to mind is i had this patient um a couple months back and he had chronic insomnia so it was a like really bad he he couldn't get a good night sleep at all he would barely sleep for 30 minutes so he was up the whole night it was extremely frustrating for him and i can't even imagine what he is going through because we all need that good night sleep right in order to function well in the day so he would never be able to get that sleep and he tried everything you know he um he uh, tried uh, the blue light therapy and he tried doing yoga he tried exhausting himself completely that worked temporarily like he would like go and completely work out in the evening so his body would be so exhausted that he had no other choice but to go sleep that worked the first few months but then that stopped working for him again a classic sign of how it's not an anamaya kosha problem something that gives you a temporary fix and the and the problem persists like how it did with my acne and how it did with my patient's insomnia then we know that it's not an anamaya kosha problem and it's not a pranamaya kosha problem because pranamaya is that link between manomaya and anamaya so i definitely knew that there was an imbalance in his breath his breath rate believe you me was 35 he had 35 breaths in a minute and i was i was like okay fine and uh, so we had so we knew definitely his mind was way too chatty his mind was way too active so we had to deal with it on the mind level now i have to get to so our mind has a mult up to thora of like emotional um, facets right so we don't know what it was what was that one or two emotions that was uh, haunting him so much that he wasn't able to sleep at night then uh, then it took me some time so i would like talk to him um, once in a while i made him go through psychic meditation uh, at least twice a week and um, by the end of the month he came back and he told me that uh, he he had this feeling that you know um, we was the exact i also tell the exact words he told me he told me that he had this 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 sort of insecurity when it came to his job 
so he he always had this you know nagging fear at the back of his mind oh my god if, if my job doesn't go well if i'm not going to be earning what's going to happen of my what's going to become of my family how will i how will my kids educate how will i educate my kids so even though it, it was completely baseless because he was in a pretty good position and he was doing the best that he could i think this fear somewhere this insecurity has like plagued the corporate world if i can say so i don't want to generalize the statement but i know many people who live with that they're like so that's why people try to keep pushing themselves because like okay i need my next promotion or if if i my um you know the end of the month i don't know how it works i think they have an end of the month kind of screening where they screen Each employee and tell them, okay, you know what? Your uh, results have gone down by twenty percent. Your efficiency has gone down twenty percent. What's happening? So this constant check-in, this constant pressure that they're on, it's it it can get it can be really daunting. So this dude's been in the corporate field for over twenty twenty five years, and he and this was even though he was doing well, he was one of the most well placed in the positions. He was a director of this huge company. He was like, and he had this fear: what if I lose my job? What if I lose my job? And that fear, and he didn't know about it. That was the Strangest part, he had no idea that he had this emotion within him. It was after so many days of, I think it's a very gradual, organic process. It just hit him one day after you know many sessions of cyclic meditation, after many sessions of yoga. So I, I was dealing with it at the animal kosha level, and eventually everything is interconnected, right? So you deal with it in some level, it will impact the other level regardless. So then he got this uh, epiphany kind of thing. Oh my God, I'm like I'm I'm constantly in fear of losing my job. I had no idea that uh, that, that I was dealing with that. So then we would we start working on that um, in a more deeper way, and um, basically it was like again analyzing. You no, know? so it's like nyana yoga. So you had to realize that this was completely baseless, and it was it it didn't make sense for him to think this way. And uh, so he started working on that, and slowly and gradually now he sleeps for I think it's been over four months. Now he's able to sleep for four hours in the night. So I'm gradually taking him towards it. It's a very, very again systematic process, but he's getting there. So this is one small incident. Then so many other incidents. People with diabetes. You know why can't? Why do they have diabetes? And I, uh, the, if you look at the cr- common crux of all these uh, diabetic uh, patients, are they have a very, uh, you know, bitter experience with life. So if they're constant, so they have like. it's something about them i feel that they're not able to you know look at a flower and be like oh wow like a flower i don't generalize these are people that have come across so they're not able they're not able to appreciate um you know things for how they are what they are because they've seen way too many hardships in life so it's made them quite cynical and so this is one thing i've seen in them and uh, obviously the number one thing i think for diabetics is their diet is so off so working in the anamaya kosha is very very crucial there but the manomaya kosha concept which i feel is that you know the inability to experience sweetness in life i think it's poetic kind of in a way that it manifests in the physical body like you can't digest sugar So I think I think it's kind of like um, yeah, like I said, it's poetic if you think about it that way. So that's another thing that uh, I've noticed. Okay, so uh, how how about uh, in hypertensive disorders? Like again, it is it could be due to plethora of uh, conditions, and there could be a lot of things running behind in their mind. Right. right. And uh, what do you think is yeah. the one so, okay. working there? The thing the thing with hypertension is again it's. Like all these chronic conditions, I we can never like even though I said something about diabetes and insomnia, we can never label it and say like this is the reason for it, that is the reason for it. Because like I explained ah uh, in the first slide, like we all are a com a composition of ah uh, you know those five elements. That so it's basically our body is a hologram of the world of the universe. So these five elements: water, fire, earth, air, space, combined together. in different magnitudes is what composes a human being so for me my composition is different for you your composition is different for someone else it's different and again vata pita kapha this is now we the concept my combination is different yours is different someone else is different this explains why you know like um why some people are thinner than other people no matter what some people do they can't lose weight or no matter what some people do they can't gain weight this is essentially a, this is a this is to, this has, has everything to do with our composition right so i can never say full on that this is the reason for this disease again it really depends on that person's individual journey and that person's body composition so having a one on one with them that would be more ideal but hypertension i feel essentially it's coming from a root of stress so when you're like too stressed and um, you know you have uh, that that really impacts the blood vessels we know that and when um, when you have this uh, when you have like extra cholesterol in your body although the cholesterol concept is i would rather say triglycerides when your triglyceride co- uh, uh, levels are too high then we know how it forms like these plaques in your body then you have calcium deposition and all of these things um, that are going on within the blood vessels and below, b- b- inside your vasculature so all of those things do contribute and the physical level 
um in the manomaya kosha level like i said it's the stress and um i feel so far uh, that's about it individually it could be different but if i had to overall put a name to it i would just say like intense stress okay and uh, i would like you to outline on how it will be in like uh, coordinate the panchakosha concept with healthy living like what should one do in every kosha level to have a healthy lifestyle okay so i'd like like uh, we mentioned about how i uh, um, ayush doctors deal with conditions you can do the same thing at home so if you uh, at the anamaya kosha level if you just start eating right you know so i i suggest to consult with a naturopathic nutritionist and you figure out what your body needs what your body is what is it that you can eat what is it that you can't eat and start living by those rules because most of us are actually intolerant to many um, to many food items and we're not aware of it so it's not just lactose intolerance there's so many other intolerances that we have but we don't have the knowledge right to understand what's going on so consult your naturopathic nutritionist figure out what food works for you what doesn't and follow that to the t when it comes to your diet and get some sort of physical activity in in a day you know no matter how busy you are no matter how in front of a, how much time you have to sit in front of a laptop at least for 20 30 minutes just go out for a walk you know stay with, stay um um you know in the surroundings of nature just get some fresh air in so allow your body to move so the more you sit the more you stagnate your system the more things are going to fester right so just move out get the circulation flowing that these are basic things that you could do it's like everyone says these things so like our vigyana maya kosha layer it understands these things but we're not applying it ever so you know these so eat right move right um then after what you could do is uh, you don't have to go through those six co- uh, cleansing processes cuz you need uh, a guide for that but if you have a yoga doctor with you or if you have a naturopathic uh, doctor with you and if they could take you through that that's great because if you cleanse out your you know upper respiratory passages through okay a very okay i'll give you an example of what um jalaneti is so a jala pot is this very uh, this like this plastic pot that we get and we fill it with this lukewarm um, salt water and we would be the way the position of the uh, the head is tilted and the face is kept we we pass water in through one nostril and the water flows out the other nostril it's a very very like um it's a very subtle gentle process it doesn't hurt you at all and it really helps so the 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 with the effect of osmosis it helps clean out all the toxins in the upper respiratory tract so people with asthma people with all these bronchitis all these um you know respiratory infections it is a holy grail for them so i've seen how much um, you know things like jalaneti and sutaneti have helped these people and also just keep your immunity immunity strong because i think all of us are prone to common cold so just doing jalaneti once in a while is great so if we can if we get in touch with a guide we can take you through that that's wonderful so that is done so movement yoga uh, cleansing processes in the uh, anamaya kosha level pranamaya kosha level every day if not any other pranayama the the most two basic pranayamas if you could get nadi shodhana in nadi shodhana's alternate nostril breathing you can look that up so eight uh, rounds of nadi shodhana and five rounds of brahmari pranayama brahmari pranayama is this uh, tranquilizing pranayama so we all know that regardless of what we say we all are stressed we all are we have a pathological amount of stress that uh, we're afflicted with so th- there's no point in debating do i have it or not we all have it so let's de- treat it treat it like as if we have it so brahmari is great for calming down the mind of you know like uh, you know kind of offering that uh, the so it's beautiful because when you when you practice brahmari you create this resonance like feeling in your head and your neck region and that really helps you in like staying in that state of silence for a few seconds at least and that will do it. so even if you can get your respiratory rate down for like a few seconds in a day that will really help you in uh, treating your conditions so just be very conscious of your breathing and um make sure that you don't know, become aware of when you're breathing fast I, am i breathing superficially am i using my belly to breathe we all never utilize the lower lobes right so just consciously like tuning into your breath throughout the day to see or uh, checking on the depth of your breath that's something you do so nadi shodhana brahmari tuning into your breath multiple times in a day that will really help you in pranamaya in manomaya kosha um i really recommend cyclic meditation so you can get hold of a practitioner or a doctor who could take you through that because it helps you go to the root, emotional root cause uh in a very subconscious organic uh way so it's it's not like it's not like therapy where you get through it with an analytical mind it it just kind of surfaces um all these emotions the answers that you need come to you i don't know how else to explain it with cyclic meditation through regular practice so that's something i recommend once a week or once in two weeks um for anyone who's dealing with uh, you know men, uh, emotional imbalances 
and the fourth thing in vigyan and my kosha is always be interested in your health you know like ask your question ask your doctor multiple questions go through research papers like figure out what it is like, okay i have diabetes cool okay i'm just going to like start metformin you know try to like um, spark that curiosity why do i have diabetes why does she not have diabetes you know what is it about me like why did i get it is it genetic is it something i'm doing wrong is something i'm eating what is diabetes like what is happening inside my body ask yourself these questions it's not only doctors that need to know everything about the human body right we all need to know a little bit about what's going on at least you don't have to know the details but at least like try to be curious about your condition because we all know the more aware we become of something the easier it is for us to take control of that problem so we can't find a solution to something that we don't know anything about so please try to like educate yourself on your condition and just try to figure out like what what could possibly be going on inside and another my kosha i this is like meditation if you can't do any of these four things toss the other four things out if you just meditate for 5 minutes a day you don't have to do the other four things i mean maybe the walking and all that i was sounding dramatic but meditation is very very important i highly recommend it i personally do it for i meditate for like at least an hour every day it's something that really helps me stay grounded it it helps me go through that path of self introspection and uh, it's helped me a lot immensely and i always propagate this i make sure all my friends do it that's why they all hate me for it but i nevertheless i make sure that at least i'm putting the word out there uh because it's very crucial um to for that anand anandamaya kosha level to awaken because that's the ultimate goal right of human life forever we like or say that's essentially so very simple you don't if you follow these four few things you don't have to like see a doctor in your life you can just be your own doctor and you can like deal with it on your own yeah okay i think you've summed up everything in a very <laughs> in a small package that will be consumable for every small <laughs> but yeah <laughs> it was it was uh, i'm sure it's going to be a uh, you know a great resource for people who are uh, wanting to have a holistic approach to uh, help people out of uh, suffering and disease again thank you so much akshaya for thank coming you for on having me abhima it's been a pleasure and uh, i'll see you again probably i don't know we'll see how it goes yeah sure thank have, you so much have a great day okay bye bye bye